Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Dr. Sarashit Patina. I'm a fertility consultant working at Indigo Women's Center Chennai. And in today's video, we're going to discuss about PGS and PGD. I discuss about a lot of gynec related issues, mostly infertility. So if that is something that interests you, a sub would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> When a couple starts their fertility journey, they get accustomed to a lot of acronyms like IUI, IVF, ICSI, PGS and PGT. So I'm going to discuss about PGS and PGT today. Although these are not the right terminology, I'm going to discuss about what is the exact and the right terminology used today. And these technologies are absolutely crucial and important because going into the future, they will become a standardized part of care for every patient who's undergoing IVF or ICSI. The newer terminologies what we use are PGTA, PGTM and PGTSR. The older terminologies like PGS, PGD and CCS are not not used anymore. The other terms like FISH, QPCR, NGS, SNP, PGAI, all of these are terminologies which are used for platforms which are helping us to sequence the DNA. <laughs> so I hope I didn't confuse you too much so far. So unless you are a genetic counselor or a genomic scientist, these other terminologies really don't matter to us. Before we talk about pre-implantation genetic testing, let's get some basics out of the way. We all know that our bodies are made up of cells and each one of these cells have a nucleus inside it. There are chromosomes within this nucleus and we all have 46 chromosomes. We get 23 from the father and 23 from the mother. So as we unravel into these chromosomes using the various technologies what I've already discussed with you about, we see a very familiar double helix structure called as the DNA. So now that we have all these basics out of the way, let's see how these technologies can actually help us. The very first test we're going to talk about is the PGTA and this is probably the most widely used test out of the three. And the reason why we do this is to know whether the embryo is a euploid embryo, an aneuploid embryo or a mosaic embryo. The reason why we want to know this is because if we go ahead and transfer an aneuploid embryo, you have a chance of having recurrent miscarriages. I have previously discussed about recurrent implantation failures and if you want to know information, click the tooltip right here. Coming to PGTM, this technology will help us detect single specific gene disorders. Now these disorders can be autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant or X-linked disorders. PGTM also helps us detect the exact genes which are responsible for hereditary cancers like breast cancers and neurofibromatosis. In fact, nowadays PGTM has also been used to select histocompatible siblings to facilitate bone marrow transplantation. And finally, we come to PGTSR, which will help us to diagnose chromosomal rearrangements like Robertson's translocation, inversion and insertions. If you want to know the various use cases for these technologies, skip to the timeline out here. But if you are interested in knowing how to get the biopsy for this particular process, do stick around. Oh, honey, now I'm going to discuss with you about the process of getting the biopsy from the embryo. First, the couple will undergo ICSI, which means intracytoplasmic sperm injection, wherein we collect all the eggs from the woman, we collect the sperm from the husband, we fertilize each one of these eggs with individual sperms and then we form the embryos. We incubate these embryos until they grow to the blastocyst stage. Now we use very fine precise lasers to hatch or open up the zona pellucida and this way we can collect some of the cells from the blastomeres which will later form the placenta for the embryo. And once we retrieve these cells, the embryos will be frozen back and kept in the incubators whereas the cells will be sent to the laboratory. Once the sample reaches the lab, gene amplification and sequencing is done and later put through AI analysis to help us select the exact embryo which can be used for reimplantation. We already know that women produce more number of aneuploid or abnormal embryos as they keep getting older and older. By performing PGTA, we are able to mitigate the effects of maternal age so thus they are able to get the live birth rates as somebody who is much much more younger to them. So this technology can also be used for couples who don't want the trauma of having recurrent implantation failures. 
PGTA can also be used to screen the embryos of patients who have severe male factor infertility. This technology can also help patients who want to avoid having multiple births and only want to go for a single embryo transfer. And finally, PGTA can be used in surrogacy programs where multiple failures or multiple transfers can drastically increase the cost of treatment for the couple. And coming to PGTM, we know exactly what we are looking for much before the patient even starts IVF treatment. PGTM can be used in patients where either one of the partners have a known genetic abnormality or the first child of the couple has a genetic abnormality and they don't want the same thing to repeat in their next pregnancy or it can be used in families where they have a genetic predisposition to get cancers. And I think one of the points I've already discussed, this can also be used to select a histocompatible sibling to facilitate a bone marrow transplant. And finally coming to PGT-SR, which is probably the least used, at least in India, out of all the three technologies, this helps us reduce the birth defects which are caused by chromosomal rearrangements. Now finally, let us club the advantages and disadvantages of the PGT testing and let us reason out why they should even exist in today's scenario. So in my opinion, the first reason why these tests even should exist is because they can let us know the status of the embryo, especially the mosaic status. Mosaic embryos have both euploid and aneuploid cells within them and they form around 10 to 20 percent of all the embryos. If there are more number of aneuploid cells, they are called as the high level mosaic embryos and if they have low levels of aneuploidic cells, they are called as low level mosaic embryos. So why is it important to know if the embryo is mosaic? Because these mosaic embryos have a high chance of self-correcting and leading to very healthy babies. Coming to the cause, yes, of course, there are going to be additional cost due to PGT testing but let's look at this scenario. What if the patient has recurrent implantation failures? If unfortunately the patient has an aneuploidic embryo transferred into her then of course the chance of an implantation failure is much much higher and then she might have to undergo another repeated embryo transfer which can again increase the cost for the patients. In the other spectrum a fresh transfer could have already led to a live birth in the first place without having to buy biopsy it because by biopsying it we are also delaying treatment by another one or two months so selecting the patient is absolutely key before going ahead for PGT. There is a 2% chance that the embryo may not survive the biopsy and the subsequent thawing process and this risk should always be explained to the patients. On the positive side of things, this will definitely help us reduce the number of embryos we transfer, thus avoiding multiple pregnancies and also it will pave the way for single embryo transfers. Some people may look at this as a disadvantage but definitely when you're going for PGTM or PGTSR diagnosis, there is likelihood that you might have to involve most of your family members for the genetic testing as well. De novo design can be used if the family members refuse to go for testing or if the family members are dead. And of course this technology should not be used to determine the sex of the baby because in India as well as in the UK determining the sex of the baby by this technology is completely illegal. And finally the other reason why I feel that we should support this technology is because newer methods of non-invasive genetic testing are coming into play and the more and more we research into this and the more and more data is available it will become easier for the companies to develop that technology. So without taking a biopsy from the embryo we will actually be able to genetically test it. And the other reason why we need to support this technology is because as it keeps improving it helps the consultants provide the couple a live birth by the fastest means possible with the least amount of trauma to the couple. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you all so much for watching. I know this was a long one. Thank you for all your support. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you have not. It takes a lot for us to make these videos and if you really enjoyed this video a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. So thank you so much for watching again and I'll see you in the next one.